Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. In the second core practical, we investigate the suitability of equipment to measure the speed, frequency and wavelength of a wave in a solid and in a fluid. The description from Edexcel says that this investigation involves looking at the characteristics of waves and using the equation V equals F lambda. It's expected that students will have looked at waves in a liquid using a ripple tank and waves in a solid using a metal rod and a method of measuring the frequency. Suitability of apparatus to take these measurements must also be considered. You can see that I've set up ready for the first part of this core practical with the ripple tank. The ripple tank has a straight dipper and I've put a ruler in place to help me take the measurements I need. I can adjust the speed of the motor and slow the waves down as they travel across the surface of the desktop ripple tank. There is a limitation though. If I slow the waves down enough to take the readings that I need, then I can't see them anymore. So I've tried to set the speed as slow as I can while still being able to see the dark and light bands of the peaks and troughs. I can use my phone to take a photograph of the waves with the ruler in the shot. This will allow me to measure the wavelength of the wave by measuring the distance from peak to peak or trough to trough. Remember, the wavelength needs to be measured in metres. Ideally, I'd be slow enough to just have two waves across the surface. Then it would be slow enough for me to be able to count how many waves pass my marked point in 10 seconds. Another limitation of the desktop ripple tank is I'm limited here and I cannot slow the motor down enough to be able to time how long it takes for one wave to move between my two marked points that are 30 centimetres apart. Let's pretend I've got a full size ripple tank and I've done the readings that I needed. So I've got the number of waves passing a point in 10 seconds and the time it takes for one wave to travel 30 centimetres. Then I would be able to calculate the speed of the waves in the liquid water in two different ways. The frequency of the water waves is the number of waves travelling per second past a point. So if I know the number of waves travelling in 10 seconds, I can just divide by 10 to find the frequency in hertz. Then, using velocity is frequency times wavelength, I can multiply the frequency and my measured wavelength from peak to peak or trough to trough from my photograph to find the velocity or the speed in metres per second. By using the result of the time it takes for one wave to travel the 30 centimetres or 0.3 metres, I can then use the speed is distance divided by time equation and divide the 0.3 by that time in seconds. That will also find me the speed of the waves in metres per second. By comparing the speed of the water waves from both methods, we'd be able to see how reliable the data is. If the values are close to one another, it would suggest the suitability of the equipment is good. Here is the second part of the core practical set up and ready to go. I've suspended a metal rod using two clamp stands and rubber bands as shown here. I've got my frequency app ready on my phone to measure the peak frequency when I hit the metal rod. 
and I'm going to try three different metal rods. I've got brass, copper and aluminium. I've managed to find three rods that are the same length. The length needs to be measured. My rods are 50 centimetres or 0.5 metres long. The wavelength of the sound will be twice the length of the rod. So using a 50 centimetre rod means the wavelength will be a handy one metre. I hit one end of the rod and hold the phone near to record the peak frequency. I repeated my readings five times in an effort to look for some concordance in the readings. I found quite a lot of variation in the results, which suggests that this experiment setup is not very reliable. This screenshot is an average result for brass. I then repeated the experiment with the copper rod in place. Again, I did repeat five readings, but you probably don't want to sit through watching that. On average, this was my result for the copper rod. And then finally, with the aluminium rod in place, I did the experiment again for five readings. You get the idea. And this was my average result for the aluminium rod. Now using the measured peak frequency from my phone and the calculated value for wavelength from measuring the rods, I can find the velocity of the sound wave in each of the metal rods. Because the velocity or the speed of the sound is the frequency times the wavelength. So by timesing that peak frequency in hertz, by the one meter wavelength that I've calculated, I should be able to find the speed of sound in the brass, the copper and the aluminium. Comparing my experimental results on the left with the research values on the right suggests that although this method is simple to set up and carry out, it's not suitable for gathering reliable data for the speed of sound in solids. You will hopefully notice though that the method is good enough to rank these three different solid materials into the correct speed order. And so that was both parts of the second core practical revised in this video. Don't forget that regular, regular review gets a better grade for you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment! Especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe! So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>